Hey, you little sweet horse. Welcome to another oh episode of why? Horrible why? Decisions. <laughs> Welcome, y'all. I'm your girl, Mandy V, a.k.a. Pet the Stallion, a.k.a. Pegan Markle, a.k.a. Mandy Baskins, a.k.a. that motherfucking bitch Maryland. in the motherfucking city. What's up, y'all? I'm Wheezy. Welcome back to another episode. Today, our guest is very legendary. Legendary. We have Cinnamon Love in the building. Yes. Do you still go by Cinnamon Love for I your still, sex ed work? Yeah, I still go by Cinnamon Love. I mean, you know, I, bitches be trying to rebrand. I mean, it's been 29 years. I think the re, the rebrand <laughs> was adding the last name Love like eight years in, but I've been doing this shit for 29 years. Like, wow. there, there is no rebrand. So <laughs> like, I have no, known your name for a long time because, yes. <laughs> I mean, you're obviously such a well-known uh, adult film actress, but also most recently you work in sex education. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, so I've been teaching people how to rethink their pleasure. And, you know, I think a lot of people are super hyper-focused on, on using porn as sex ed, but they forget that what they're watching is it's edited. Fake. It's fake. No, it's, it's not fake. Like it's Some real. Of it is, right? Have I you mean, read that book, Your Brain on Porn? I have not read the book, Your Brain Do, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but I know what you're talking about. Someone sent it to me. Shout out to Miko. And it's funny because it's a dude I work with. And I was like, this is weird. Does he think I'm an addict? Yeah. But it was so interesting to read because it was just talking about, and one of the things I've mentioned a horrible lot, how much more we need when we're watching porn. Yes. And I realized I do that. Like if I'm watching maybe two like lesbians just scissoring, then suddenly I need them to be more aggressive. Then I get into some weird hardcore shit. Then it's like, boom, boom, boom. It just levels up. Yeah. And my porn can't be normal anymore. Yeah. I 100% know, like, watching gay porn is why I like eating nigga booty so bad. Yes. I love. Why I like eating nigga booty? Nigga booty. He's a great. Because I'm a fucking chapter title. I'm just saying, because I don't, you know, I don't deal with the pink dick. So it'd be like beautiful, my little brown chocolate starfish. But I know it's because I've grown like more of a fascination from with the male butt porn. from watching gay porn. Yeah. And because like they're also like masculine, I don't have those hangups of of men not knowing how to clean. I'm also friends with a lot of gay men. Like the idea that straight men just don't know how to wipe ass is really odd to me because yeah. I deal with a lot of super clean men. Yeah. And so watching porn and seeing them taking some big old dick. I don't know why this is no dick. I've no yeah. yeah. been fucking out. niggas that take showers and it's just. <laughs> I love right. it. Wow. Right. Like, like if I walk into your house and your your bathroom is filthy, I'm not going to take my clothes off. I'm like the toilet, off. the toilet, the like, toilet. You got, was you got that tweet? Did you guys see the tweet? <laughs> yes. Where the girls oh, the were bad. sharing, guys. Yes. Oh, my There's God. There's no way. There was There's a no whole way. thread. And you know what? Let me ask you, because you've been around the block. Mm. Let me know. Did you mean that like you? It sounded because both. I did. <laughs> She's been around the block. She said I've been around the block. Like yeah, 30 20, years. almost 30, you know 30 years. I mean? Cinnamon, yeah. not Jenny. You yeah. know, so let me ask you then. In dating and before having sex with someone, if you do go to someone's house, mm -hmm. what are things that you will see that will be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave um, or I'm the, not interested. The hard towel in the not, bathroom. Not the hard towel. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're like, no. I know exactly what you're saying. You know what so I'm talking why? about, right? So why? So like, why? like it hasn't been washed. Like, you know what I mean? Or or not having towels, not having like hand soap in the bathroom. Yes. Just a bar. Yeah, just a bar. The bar or, yeah. or having like three in one, you know, like body, wash? Like, body wash. Like, <laughs> like shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. Yes. No. Actually, there was a guy that I was seeing a couple a few years ago, and I walked in his apartment, you know, like I walked in his place and I was like, this is not gonna work for me. And I and I left. And then he hit me up and was like, what what happened? And I'm like, well, I'm a woman and this is not clean. Like, like I'm not, it's not even about being bougie, but it's like not I'm, comfortable. I'm not laying down in your bed and taking my clothes off if I have to worry about whether or not I'm gonna, you These know. The sheets are even clean. The sheets are even clean. Are they even clean? Are they even clean? Like if you don't have, you don't have at least like, you know, food in your fridge. <laughs> like how I, I need water after we have sex. I like, used I to need, think that like 
the things that I required from a dude's house had to do with money when I was younger. No. Because I had been very spoiled by good products and things men would have. And like, honestly, it's just not at all. Like, no. It's even if a dude... Hygiene. It's, it's hygiene. hygiene. It's just it's hygiene. hygiene. There was one guy, there was a, an actor that I dated back in the, like very briefly back in the 90s. And he is the reason why I have the standards I do now around cleanliness with men because his house was so fucking dirty. Like, I didn't see it when we walked in because the... They're going to say the opposite. His house was so great. No. And then it's like when I, I got up to go to the bathroom after we had sex and I was like, where the fuck am I at? Like, I couldn't even... I couldn't even sleep. Like I literally started cleaning his apartment. Not because I wanted to like clean his apartment. I wasn't trying to be chose. Like I couldn't even lay, like lay my head down on, I was like, wow. and, and it was funny because his mom came in in the morning, like she had a key. She came in in the morning and she was walking, like I was in the bathroom, cleaning the bathroom because I wanted to take a shower. And I couldn't take a shower. Like there was like food cartons everywhere. And it's like, and she was, so when she walked in, she was like, there's a, there's a, you, there's been a woman here. Like, do you have a girlfriend? And That's I was like, and that was a problem. That was a problem. But after she should that, be embarrassed that her son, that her is, so son much, is so dirty. dirty. That's nasty. That's so and also, nasty, there's a difference yeah. between filth and mess. Like, yes. I've yes. definitely dated messy guys where their laundry will never Clothes get folded. everywhere, mm -hmm. yes. But like, filth is different. Filth is different. It was so filthy. And so because of that, I've never, like, at this, like, now, I'm like, I walk in and I say, okay, like, what am I looking for? Like, is there, is the, is it clean? First of all, do you have bath products? Are there clean towels? Is there water in the fridge or at least a Brita filter? Like something. <laughs> right. So because after we have sex, like I'm going to want water. Like, you know, you shouldn't have to go make a run to the bodega to get water after we fucked. Like, how am I supposed to like right. you, you're obviously Girl, you better not that tap. <laughs> I mean, New York water. New York water is they, good. They, they, got water is good. Water right they got polio in the water. They got polio in the water now. Wait, but it polio used to be in the water. Yes, yeah. they got it from the water. No, no, like people, you know, people don't oh. vaccinate their kids, yeah, and now we got right. polio. Oh, polio is I up in the like building really the same way like, that COVID. Is that how people <laughs> catching <laughs> polio <laughs> through the water? I don't know why this just made me think of. I'm like, so I was like a really big hater before I watched it, the little baby doc. Mm. I was like laughing about, I saw people on Twitter talking about like, yo niggas feeling inspired from the rapper's dog, like you need a new man. But I watched it and it was really well made. Yeah. Even talking about politics, just the way it was filmed, like phenomenal. Yeah. But one of the things I noticed that I thought was so funny was how rich he is, how he, they've talked about how he's been rich forever, how he was a millionaire before he was rapping, but his house had a lot of empty parts. I'm like, this is such a nigga's house. house. Yeah. Like, his closet, phenomenal. The sneakers, like everything. And it wasn't dirty. It was just empty rooms yeah. in this mansion. And it's like, obviously you can figure this out, but you know what niggas don't do? Think of interior design. They don't. No. They you know don't. what I'm saying? They, they you just like, Ridiculous. bucket. Also, yeah. best thing, I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, he was going to the Grammys with his son. And this to me, I love watching black kids live in luxury and understand mm -hmm. wealth. So they're going down the stairs and they're dressed so adorably. And there's like a fountain underneath where the stairs are. And little baby drops his phone. He's like, fuck. And he's running to grab his phone. And the son goes, but don't worry, dad, you're rich. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Right, right, I love exactly. this shit. But yeah, like really it has nothing to do with money. You went to an actor's house. It was filthy. It's just never like, again. niggas need to be elevated by never, women. Never, never, ever. Again. Yeah, I mean, because if you have money like that, like hire a housekeeper, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to live that way. Get your task, grab it on, get a coupon code. Something. Now let's get to what we really want to know about. The whole shit. The whole so, shit. So <laughs> I, I know about you from the era of here were my personal favorites. Not saying you weren't in there, but this was okay. like women that I feel like I remembered because they were top dogs. Yeah. And then when you're like looking at their shit, you find cinnamon love. Mm -hmm. Like you were kind of in your own lane. It, Pinky had her own kind of vibe. But then I feel like Capri Styles, Lacey Zuval, cinnamon love is what I was Cherokee like. Cherokee does. Cherokee does. Cherokee was like, yeah. because y'all all had a similar body type. Capri, Lacey, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. right? Yeah. Cherokee to ass was that Pinky like super it's so funny. fat you're, you're naming like a bunch of people that I used to manage, but go ahead. Uh <laughs> 
so you did you you did management? I had a yeah, I had a management company called Urban Eye Candy. Um, all of these people that you're naming, they came after I did, right? So yeah. when I came into the business, it was Lana Sands, Janet Jack, me, wow, Boy, Persia, um, Persia, um, Sh- Champagne Pendavis. Like, you know, those those were the people. Girl, that's the generation. The I only know I'm, Janet, yeah. Jack, me, and Persia. Yeah, Janet. So Janet, I, I came in after after they did. And so, and then everybody else that you're like that, those early 2000s people came in after. Let's talk about age, can we? Yeah. So you're 48, correct? For, yeah, I'm 48. So you started in 1993. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's so in 93 fucking- when I was 19. I was the very first black kind of like girl next door. Only because I like I looked like I was a minor, right? So when I came in, a lot most of the women outside of like Lana Sands and Janet Jack me had these like these er, late eighties, early nineties porn star bodies, which were the big, huge tits, yep, little bitty, the bimbo face, look, no hips, no ass, because that's what was selling on the feature market, yeah, uh-huh. and that's what the white men want to see, right? So when I came in, I looked like I was scouted because I looked like I was barely legal. I was like the very first barely legal black porn star. Was wow. that something that you were okay knowing that this was the fantasy I that was you, you until were? Until I showed up in, there was a photo from my very first Hustler magazine shoot that was that appeared in the movie Freeway with Reese Witherspoon. Oh my yeah, God. So for people who don't know, Freeway was, to me, was her best ever, her best movie that she that ever did. That movie was fire. It movie was but fire. I like, I like and now I gotta fun. go back and look. So there's a scene in the movie, so so for the people who don't know, it's like it's a Red Riding Hood take, right? Uh, it's a modern Red Riding Hood take. And there's a scene in the movie where um, they go to the house to, you know, to the killer's house and they cut the lock on a shed in the backyard and all this like child sexual exploitation material comes out. And I'm watching the movie on, on, on DVD. And all of a sudden there's this, there's this picture of me that comes like this flying out of the, and I'm looking, I'm like, wait, what? And I'm like, so I have to pause it and go back. And I'm like, they're using a picture of me for child pornography, for child sexual exploitation material. And I was like, oh yeah, no, we got to do a rebrand. Like that was actually the re when I rebranded because I was like, this is not okay. What does a rebrand is- look like for, for in porn? For, for some, so for me, like, you know, the porn industry doesn't have the same kind of like branding and marketing for performers the way that the music industry or the or film and television does. So like if you think about like in, in music, you know, what you start like your Britney, Christina, Beyonce, you start off as a teen. Yep. And then as you, you get girl. older, you get sexier. You get sexier. The, the tops get shorter. Yep. The skirts get shorter. Music gets a little dirtier. So did right? you go in reverse? So, well, no. So I started off as a teen, but then because of the way the porn industry works, usually you age out. Yes. Right. Or it used to be that you would age out. So for me, what I did was I started shooting with companies that were also shooting Playmates because like mm. so a lot of people what were some of those companies. Um, well, like Kink.com, I shot for they were one of the first a lot of photographers that I worked with, like um, no, I'm trying to think of who I worked with. There's like I, Christine, Christine Kessler, um, Ashley Fontenot. Like there was a bunch of people that I that were shooting glamour models um, because the way that Playboy used to work is that the Playmates could do they could do glamour and they could do kink, but they couldn't have on like uniforms or costumes. OK. Right? And they couldn't do hardcore porn. So I could shoot with like fetish companies and fetish photographers because Playmates would also be on the platform. And then that way their audience would also get to witness and see me. So that for me, like shooting with these kinds of photographers to, you know, allow my character to grow up, my on-screen character to grow up and represent myself the way that I see myself, right? Not as a, you know, a cheerleader, you know, like whatever, like, you know, this is like super interesting to me because we are in an era of OnlyFans and, you know, to have a conversation with someone that's been in the game so long and been yeah. able to keep up a career in sex work, whether sex at anything, porn, like is really interesting to me. What do you think of this era in terms of like, how do they grow? I love it. I love it so much. I mean, first off, 
there's nothing is there's nothing new under the sun, right? Right. So way back when I think like '97, I danced in a peep show booth on 42nd and 8th. Oh my God! Right. What's that? What did you do in it? Tell me about the peep show. We were talking about this. (laughs) The peep show was it was dope. I mean, it was one of my first trips to New York. You know, I I met a guy at an afties in LA, and he the next day he was like, "I'm going to New York tomorrow." I was like, "I want to go." So he got me a ticket, and I came to New York. But he lived in Long Island. He lived in Hempstead, and I was like, "Oh, that's far, bitch." (laughs) That's giving giving Jersey. No, it was far. So I was. I was like, let me find my way. How do I get into the city? <laughs> right. And so I, you know, I came, I came into the city. I met an agent. I, you know, made some calls. There was, you know, a New York um, porn no, agent. D- porn and, agent. Porn okay. agent. And he booked me to dance at this. It was a, it was a, you know, like a sex shop video store on, I think on that one's still open. and it had peep show booths in the back. So I, you know, I had never done that before. Like I worked in phone sex before, but I, you know, you'd go into the booth. I was about to say break down you what were, working so, at. This, you, so this you life. go into these little booths and it would be like a little tiny like octagon. So is it just you and one it's of the first? It's just ones? you. And okay. then the other person is sitting behind a glass yes. screen on the other side. That's and you cool. see though, they would and you could see them. So they would put like cool. mon- coins in this the is still available in New York, by the way. Yeah, you it, would, it doesn't necessarily, they're not in there, but you can see it. It's yeah. on eighth app still. Yeah, you you would go, they'd put the coins in the machine and the curtain would come up. And then you would dance. And so the way they taught me was like you would slowly move, you would move and you would kind of like start to and dance around. And they, and start to, and then they had to put more how, coins how, in. How long did they get per minutes, coin? Minutes. It would be like, you know, I don't remember the exact amount, but I would say it was kind of like like three dollars for three minutes or some, something, something along those how lines. How are you making? I was making, it wasn't a lot. Like it would be like maybe $200, $300 a night. But it was, it was one of those things. I was the only black girl that was there. And so it's like they were, there was a little bit of, you know, it was a a nice constant flow. Can you, you could see them. I could see them on the other side. And so they they would, they would be jerking off. Oh, bitch. They would be jerking off. And so, but when I say everything, there's nothing new. It's the same thing with campsites. Except that now they use their credit card instead of a coin. Yes. I, I have to make this like point. You're not that old. No. The fact that you were in a coin booth. In a coin booth. Nuts. In a coin booth. That's nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. Like I, that should sound like a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago. I know. But it's but it's wild. It's like this is pre-Giuliani, right? Where this where the, yes. all the sex shops still existed over in New York. Up, in New York. Yep. And so like, but to be able to even think about the fact that I had that experience, right? Like that I could go to a peep show booth and, and work. I worked in a phone sex bank for like two days. In a bank? What's it like Wait, there? What is a phone sex bank? Phone, Not so, like telemarketing. Marketing, yeah. Yes, like telemarketing. Geek fucking telemarketing. So back in the day when did they find they, you in the yellow pages? N- they didn't find me in the, in the yellow Imagine pages. Imagine if but, someone but they, yeah. doesn't know what that is. Well, actually, actually, oh, my I'm- first my first time ever working, like seeing people in person, I worked out of the LA Weekly, which was it was in and 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 also which still exists. Which still exists. And also there were other, like you would see in, you know, in LA, you see the the red boxes in New York too, but you see the red boxes on the corner that have all the free TV. papers. Yes. Oh, the red, oh. And they have the free papers. So there were, there were escort newspapers that like in LA, like you would pay for your ads. Those are like the, the gay newspapers nowadays. You they're the gay that? papers now. Yeah. But that was, that was, those were the kinds of things like when I, I'm actually, I'm shooting a documentary next month for A&E on, I'm for Vice rather on, um, on sex before the internet. And so, so these are some of the types of wow. things that I, that I, I had an opportunity to do that just, that nowadays people would be like, what you were, you were advertising in the paper. I mean, we used to advertise in the back of the New Yorker, you know, so for, for a sec, you know, for escort. I mean, but also time. your videos were put to like VHS. VHS. And they had to buy and it DVD. that way and DVD. DVD. And Blu-ray and, and streaming, this was, like, and, yeah. And so even yeah, when you did it, it was because you said '93 because when you started, that was before also the, before the before internet. The internet. with escorting in papers. Yeah, I can't imagine how terrifying because with the internet, you can see what they look like. You can maybe Google some yeah, stuff. Yeah, with the pictures in the in the papers, we would, you could do either you for could, herself you could do for myself. I could either put an ad. It was like a hundred dollars to put an ad up with a pay, with your photo and a description, or it was like sixty dollars to put an ad with just like your just text. And Craigslist was also our Craigslist. modern version of that. Right, Craigslist was the modern version of that. And but, not even, but the same way, Craigslist. Not all of the posts had photos. Right. Sometimes you had to email. 
if you were inquiring, then get a photo or yep. it would all be blurred faces. Yep. Was your face blurred in, no. on these papers? My face was not, but there was no blurring like oh, option. I mean, you could, you could put a picture of like that didn't Cut show off. your What'd face. What'd you do? You had to mail your picture in? No, you would go to the, there, you'd go to the office. And, and they would, would scan like, it. And no, you would just, you would, yeah, you would give them whatever you want. Cause there was email, I, you know, but, but not like in, I want to say there was email. email? I think Hold on. Email. So yeah. I don't think how there did was you, email. How did you protect yourself yeah. oh, from getting arrested? So I was really fortunate that when I first got into the business, there was, um, I think I was like maybe, maybe two, well, it was two, I was like a year in. I met, I was on a set and I met a woman who actually thought that I was somebody's kid sister that the director and studio owner allowed to be on the set. And she, like cussed, she like cussed him out because she was like, you're gonna get us all arrested. And then when she found out that I was actually talent, she was like, wait, what, you're, you're, you're a performer? Like, how long have you been doing this? What have you, do you dance? Like, what's the story? So she was the person, her and her roommate, they were the people who taught me how to be a hoe. Uh, like, they, they taught me how to walk in six inch stilettos to the beat of music. They showed, they went, took me to buy my first pair of thigh high. Boots. You do look really young. Here. I looked looking really, at this really picture young. of you, the one with glasses on. That one wasn't any, that's like in the 2000s though. That's like milf porn. Well, not, this okay. is why you, I'm trying to find your, you, I my see girl. the baby face. Put, this look, one? Look for, yeah, no, that's, that's all. Put, put 1900s. <laughs> 1900s. <laughs> put, the, um, put the 1900s. I'll have to show you some stuff. Girl, does your booty grow and then get smaller again and yes, then grow? It does. <laughs> yeah. You know, you lose weight. I was yeah. like, because we know it ain't Photoshop back then. Okay. No. How many I scenes have you done? Like 250. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at this one we're looking at. Let me describe this to y'all. <laughs> there is, right? There is a, you are tied to, it, there's cups over your tits. What? Like literally cupping like someone does on the back. You're strapped up by the wrist and the stomach. And a magic wand. A magic wand some, a woman's using on you. What's the wooden thing underneath? Is That's that the fucking machine. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. A fucking machine. <laughs> Ed, and I don't want to get it on YouTube. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, okay. fucking fucking machine. Yeah, it's a machine that has the um, that had a dildo attached to it. <laughs> I saw it on Real was, Sex. Nice. Yeah, you you turn it on and it it fucks you for the person. How many scenes have you done? Like 250. Actually, and it really, it's, I probably did like maybe 150 scenes and then there's like 100 like, you know, mixtapes. I, I, mix I have a few questions too about like money. <laughs> so I did an episode, um, I have a show about business of sex. Mm -hmm. No really sex stories, just finance on it. Yeah. And we went to um, Evil Angel where they talked about legacy studio like rates and how girls get like $2,000, the big yeah. stars. And, uh, and they're like, well, OnlyFans girls obviously make more, but they want to do film so that people will see their face and then go to their OnlyFans. I, I disagree with that. So I, yeah, I want to. Yeah. I disagree with that because like it used to be back in the day, you had like the, the dancers would go to the big studios to the dance porn, strippers like strippers would go. would go to the big studios, like an, like the legacy studios. Yes, Stormy they, used to do that. Yeah, Stormy, everybody used to do that. So because the, you would go dance for the, you would shoot for these companies so you could get box covers. And then the box covers would allow you to go back to the strip clubs to feature. I like to describe, like for people who don't understand what that means, yep. it's like when a, when, a, when a rapper tours, you know, you know, tours, all the concert girls. venues. I've seen Marie Love at a strip club like that, that. Yeah. years ago. Like, yeah. Yeah, that that's kind of the way that, that's the way that the, the feature dance circuit works. So, but the, the thing is like, you don't need that anymore. You don't need a box cover because Instagram is your box cover. Instagram now. Right? So, whereas before you had so to work for So it's kind of still the same thing though because OnlyFans is just a strip club now where you can make that money right. and it's your own. You make the money and it's your own, but it's like, you don't, but if you can do the social media marketing and you get the followers, why do you need to shoot for a company to get you a don't. box cover? You don't. What were the rates like back then? Because he said a top girl today is getting 2,500. So... When I started, the going rate for like you would get a lot of money, like fifteen hundred to two thousand for your first couple of scenes, yep. and then after that, like the you know blowjob scenes were like three hundred dollars, five hundred five hundred dollars for boy, you know five hundred to eight hundred for a for a boy girl scene. Girl girl scenes were usually a little bit less, um, but then you you know when I think about you know anal scenes would be like maybe twelve to fifteen or you know something like that, but. It's and then you go up depending on how the many people are like the game bang. What's the most like you've made and was that like your most brutal 
the most did I you ever made, do ghetto gaggers i did not do ghetto gaggers well, and tell and me actually, why because they're racist talk, let's talk about what ghetto gaggers is yeah so ghetto gaggers is a they are a company that is run by white men they also they have a, another website called latina abuse and they basically they they basically Hopefully. like they it's they they consider themselves extreme hardcore porn, but really what they do is they fly women in from wherever they are on like overnight flights. They get them to a studio in, they take them straight to the studio in the middle of BFE, Jersey. They have them, they don't get them checked into a hotel first. And then they put them in this, in these compromising position where it's like they're, they're giving them pizza and like, like stuff that's really greasy. And then they have, they film them going going through their checklist of all the different things that they're okay with and the things that they're interested in doing. And then they start shooting the scene, right? So the woman has already signed a release form with a full stomach, with a full stomach and they have them, they shoot these scenes with them where they are literally just trying to make them throw up. And so, wow. and I've seen, I've seen scenes where they had a girl throw up in the, in a dog bowl and then poured it on her head. Right. I saw and that one. And it's and it's 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 really you can tell, like, even if somebody's interested in hardcore, really hardcore, extreme, like BDSM, that you can see the look on someone's face in their videos when, uncomfortable. when they go oh, from the captions are like making the bitch cry. Like, yeah. Oh, and it's, it's so fun. And you can see that where they go from I'm OK with this to. I'm what, scared. What the fuck did I just like? What the fuck did I get? For? What I yep. sign up for? And because they've flown them out, they don't have a hotel room. They're it's like they don't check them into the hotel until after the scene is over. So they're literally like, you know, it's it's coercion. Yeah. Like, okay. I have to tell you guys about how why I asked about ghetto gaggers. I was asked to do a short documentary series on violence and porn, and this was a few months ago. Right after shooting Sex Cell season two. So I was like, oh, Ghetto Gaggers is the worst I've ever seen. Yep. We've got to talk about that. All of them are going to be a little bit older to where they could probably talk about it and be done with it. Right. I had to go through the site to find the girls that I wanted to work with. I could not even finish it. Yeah. And I said, yo, I'm not the person for this. It was right. supposed to be educational. And um, it, no, no, no. The doc we were making, by oh, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which it was, I'm sure. But I was like, I don't think I could do it. Yeah. It was taking me to a place that was so it's violent. difficult. And you're right. You watch this. I don't even know how it's still up. And you know what's yeah. crazy? How cancel culture exists, right? You think about this Tiffany Haddish, Ari Spears thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. How did this skit exist? It's gone now. That's going to happen to ghetto gaggers. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know Some how point. it happens. Yeah. But found a girl I wanted to interview. Started watching it. The look. The comments. Yep how they increasingly enjoyed her getting more upset. Oh my God, bro. Like, I don't even know how it's still legal. And now dog fart yep. is a company. Shit. So I like bukkake porn. So do when I type it in, I find a lot of dog fart. Yeah. Which is literally them wearing Confederate flag shirts, fucking yep. women on trash cans. Like yep. it's so crazy. They tried, they tried to get me to shoot for that Confederate flag shirt. It's like seeing like it's like a it's like a blow bang with the guys wearing the confederate confederate flag t shirt. And they use black women. And they use black women. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And Latina, I want, and Latinas. I actually want Latinas. I, and Latinas. I wanted to ask you about that because you coming in as the girl next door, a petiter, a, a more mm -hmm. petite body, not not me making up words, but a more petite body. <laughs> did you start off with white men? Because we've I also did. and we've talked to porn stars that said that they stayed there because once you fucked a black man in porn, your rate would go down. Did yeah, you experience so, that as well coming in early on? Or no. It, what was that it, like? So, so two things. The reason why a lot of white women wait to shoot with black men later is because back in the 80s and the 90s, yes. when, when white performers would have to also do the feature dance circuit, most of the strip clubs that would have like chains of stores, so like Deja Vu, a lot of their stores would be oh, yeah. across the Bible Belt and across the Midwest. Okay. So if you were a white performer, you could not tour those strip clubs Shut across the Bible Belt, they, they wouldn't book you wow. because if because you had had sex with a black guy. Wow. So wow. fuck the fact that your pussy's all, over, all over the internet. Are you I, I mean, all of yeah, a exactly. Black one? I've got a black guy. Yeah, we, 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 the Bible Belt ain't. Sodomy's okay, but not. 
In some places, it's not. In some places, like well, Texas, saying, like, it was legal up until a few years ago. Fuck in the ass, but but don't be yeah. But don't but don't fuck, don't fuck no black guy. Wow. And so and so a lot of like when I came in, a lot of the women were told, uh, the white women were told, if even if they were fucking black guys in their personal life, even if their boyfriend was black, they were told to wait and hold their first scene with a black guy for later when their career would start to like ebb and flow. Like, so that way they wow. could, they could charge the most money for their first scene with a black guy. Right. So, and actually up until 2020, when the porn industry had its black lives matter moment, which is a whole nother conversation, but there, we, it was up until then that there was an industry wide decision to not charge, like to not allow agents to charge more money for a white girl's first scene with a black Which dude. Which is nuts. They're, and, they're and doing that now with, with gay men that if you top, the longer you top, mm -hmm. the more the fans want to see, see you bottom. bottom. Wow. And yeah. so like, I know, yep. so like, I'm cool with all the OnlyFans niggas now, so we be talking because <laughs> I follow them all too. Bring them on here. I know, not all of them yep. live here, yeah. but we were talking about that. Well, one lives in Vegas. We we, we got to work. I know a few. And now Zeus then hired them all to fucking fall in love with Bobby <laughs> Light. So now all them niggas getting famous. And I'm like, I don't want to hear you talk. I just wanted to see you bent over. Right. But they were telling me how, even if they're versed in real life, the longer they stay yep. atop in gay porn, mm -hmm. the higher the, the higher they can charge whenever they do bottom. Yeah. Like literally, I watched one guy do it and they added all the like th thematic music of the dick finally going in this top's ass and it's crazy. <laughs> it is nuts. I have it saved in you my know, notes. You know, I'll show it you, you know what's so crazy is that like when I came in, it's like, you know, there there was no equivalent to the black dick rate for black women. That's right? There's nuts. none. It's like you basically, as a black woman, you're expected to come in, or a Latina, you're expected to come in doing everything, right? So, you know, even- You they, couldn't they, say no. I mean, not that, not that you can't say no, but it's there's just an expectation. It's like, of course, people ask you, like, what do you know? Do you do anal? Do you do DPs or do you do group sex? Like, you know, all of these, they ask you what you do, but there's no different. There's no there's no big, you know, black dick rate for black women. And the reason the black dick rate existed is because there's this it's the stereotype of black men having bigger dicks. Yes. And even though you out or what? right. Even though there's white guys in porn that have big dicks. Yo, like, do you know what I'm saying? James so, had that big old, the white boy I used to play, it was big. Manuel Ferreira has a big, has a big ass dick. He like, does. You know, and it's like, there's no, I was never off more- Manuel, girl, he ain't white. He's from Spain. He's, 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 he's spicy. He's white he's spicy. presenting. That's a spicy he's white. Spanish. He's, he's, he's Spanish. from Spain. He's, he's Spanish. Spanish. That but, ain't white. But that's from Spain. But he's like, spicy he's white, but that ain't white. white. Oh. I mean, well. I mean, it's still- now, if you say Manny, but that <laughs> motherfucking oh, name Manny's. is Manuel. But, dude, but you know what I'm saying? It's like there's no, there's no, there's no special rate for him. There's no. Right. I worked with Rocco Sofredi. There's no, there's no bit special big dick rate for to fuck Rocco Sofredi, and he has a huge dick. You know what wow. I'm saying? But so it's, it's a. There's a. There was always this this fucked up way that they would, you know, make it seem like it's like, oh, it's just because of the black guys. Like, and I did like, I did a scene for Vivid with Shane Diesel and Richard Mann, two of the, once they got out of their con, their individual contracts, I was shooting a scene for, um, for, um, Rough Sex 2 for, with Tristan Terramino. And she was like, what's one thing that you want to do? And I was like, I want to do a hardcore BDSM scene with, you know, BDSM scene with hardcore sex with, to with you know with a group of black guys right like i wanted these two black guys who are known for having the biggest dicks their whole careers they were put with only little tiny petite white girls right because to fit the stereotype i want that big black dick of the, you know, and i'm like i want i want the big black dick and i also i brought in another black guy this um name um, wait so Orpheus you went from black. 2 to 3 I, Orpheus, it was, it was I remember Orpheus that. i brought in Damn, Orpheus I'm Orpheus was I'm my yeah, Orpheus was my uh, was my top for the scene. I created this really dope ass scene where I was like, I wanted to do domestic service. I had this latex French maid's outfit on with a with a like a do porn like you have to do a porn treatment like film for some films for some films. I definitely. love a good storyline. I love a storyline. I love too. a good storyline. I, story story I need to keep going. Movie. Okay, so yeah. so yeah, so I had they I I had this um I had this idea that I wanted the guys like all in like a shirt, you know, shirt collared shirts, playing pool. I was going to do, you know, be serving drinks and then I would spill a drink on one of the guests so that my top would have to discipline me. <laughs> and then part of the discipline was to loan me to his his boys. It's giving so, you don't even want the money at this point. <laughs> 
<laughs> now you, you wanted, wanted this. I wanted, I wanted the money too. I mean, well, you know, it's like I get turned on by by getting paid to have sex, right? That's my she that's said my cash thing. rules that's everything around cash me. Cash rules everything Green. around me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really dope. So we got to do some knife play and some fire play, and and also I got fucked by Shane and you know and Richard, and it was dope because here's two guys who are known for having that, like they're like twelve plus inches, and to be able to, I was like, nah, I want to show that black women can also do all of the oh, big dirty oh. things. Yeah, take dick, <laughs> do all the dirty, nasty shit. Like, I mean, my whole- Well, not even that. Was, the BDSM, having black men engaging in BDSM right. as a, is as super a, hot. It's having black people engaging in BDSM. I mean, that's why we have the show because we- oftentimes look at BDSM and all those things, kinks, as white people shit. That's white people what we shit. started the pod saying. And there are so many black people that truly enjoy are into it. Yeah. It took and me really a while to like find that. And also, I remember we had an episode where we interviewed this guy who was like, I was telling this story about how someone tied me up and blindfolded me. He was like, you let a white man do that to you. And I was like, you know how difficult it is? Like me yeah. and black men and them kind of wanting them to get that way. Nowadays... I, yeah, actually, that was only episode six years ago. I th actually yeah. think it's different now. It's different now. Oh, I yeah. think it's. I think that, and I think that people like King and Jasmine have definitely Shout out moved to the move yeah. that forward. I mean, there were always people doing like black people doing, you know, involved in the BDSM scene. Mm -hmm. But like when I shot, I was the very first per like black person to shoot for kink.com. That scene that you pulled up with the fucking machine was for kink that way back in the day. Wow. But when and when I shot for them, the, my first scene for them was actually with the owner of the company because and he was he pushed back so much about hiring me because he was terrified of the of the social pushback of putting a black, of putting a black woman in bondage and and like you know or in a cage like he was really afraid was there pushback though from hell no, no. Right? <laughs> hell no i mean i mean there was i got pushed back on forums like there were some some porn forums back in the day where people of course were like oh she's setting the black race back 50 years like Nigga, what? No. Like, how am I how am I setting the like? It's sex. It's not like like I'm not actually. Do you in, feel like being? I'm not somebody that slave. Me of like, like Mia I'm being, Khalifa conversation. The Mia Khalifa conversation. Like, tell me more. Tell me more. Actually, this is interesting. So, I talked about this with a mutual friend of ours. That thing we were both asked to do. There, there's a platform that wanted to interview people about sex, and they asked me what I thought of Mia Khalifa. But they told me that earlier that day they were going to talk to Cinnamon. Oh, yes. we. I yes. said, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We all know Mia Khalifa's story already. Yeah. She wore the hijab. It was only a few scenes she did. Now she's a millionaire. People hated her. They wanted to kill her. Like, not saying it's not fucked up, but... Yeah. And now we she's heard on, this story where she was on daytime television. And now she's on OnlyFans. And How are we not wonderful. gonna talk to the black girl that is older than her with a longer standing career that's probably got more stories? Bro, they were all on the Zoom feeling stuck. Did they tell you that? Uh, yeah, no, they oh. yeah, they told me they told they were me like, that okay, you were well, excited that Bro, we they talk. crossed her off the list after I said that. And it's like something and then, that I and think then they people just it. don't really they're not really conscious of. Yeah, and then and then they ghosted. But but that's another story for another day. But but I think that there's you know people are always looking for this. Um, they're looking for uh, you know stories that fit a certain narrative. Yep. And so like for me like you know I I that platform like last year and I actually told them when we first got on the call that you know I was really glad that they reached out because last year they did a show where they were regurgitating some very swerfy language and some Christian conservative like talking points around how porn harms women as if we are not women also those of us who are doing this work and it's like I think a lot of people don't they don't people don't understand where some of these misconceptions and you know about porn come from right you've got you have you know, right wing Christian conservative organizations like Nicosi who swear that if you are black or brown or, or queer or trans or disabled or poor, that you your your you know proximity to white supremacy makes it, you know, and, you know, systemic oppression makes it to where you can't actually choose to do sex work. Right. And it's like. 
a lot of so times they are you saying that poor like people can't don't thing. have yep. choice like exactly. you're saying that if you're and and what they're basically doing is they're taking you know like iconic black feminist theory from like the Kahambi River Collective who 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 said that you know our intersectionality is in direct relationship with capitalism yep. right so and it's like yes that's true but that doesn't mean that we don't have choice like there's mad people who were survivors of sexual violence who don't choose to go into sex work there are people who are poor or who choose to work retail and or work at McDonald's or whatever as opposed to going into sex work. It's not it's your 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 proximity to capitalism like cap we all have the right to survive capitalism by any means necessary. Right. Like do you know what I'm saying? And it's like so why should that not be a choice? It's like there are a lot of people who can't maintain traditional employment, can't find or maintain traditional employment, or who just don't want to. No, like these jobs don't pay a living wage. Is a real thing. Like I've definitely felt. For one, I've definitely had sex with someone for rent money and mm -hmm. not have wanted to do it. But I'm also a hypocrite because I can remember the moments where. I didn't need to fuck that nigga for money, but knowing that he was going to give me some money felt great. And felt I great. kind of agree with like being turned on by it. There was a lot of moments like when I was thinking back and we were having a conversation recently about, you know, you talking through therapy. The two things I had discovered through therapy were one, forgiving myself for those moments where I did have to fuck for money. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones where I was like the guilt I had because I did kind of like it. Well, and here's like, the thing. Why am I here's here's the thing. Why should you have to forgive yourself for the things that you chose to do in order to survive capitalism, right? Because your the other option is what to be on the street. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's you shouldn't have to forgive yourself for the choices that you made. Nobody is going to tell somebody, oh, you know, you should forgive yourself for when you had to take that low pay, low wage job yeah, right. in order no for you to you in that. order That's for you to fit point. your to pay for your it. kids, you know, for whatever. So why should you have to forgive yourself for the choices that you made when you when you had fewer options? But also right? people don't believe that sex workers have a choice. Right. Which where. Like, to me, if I'm fucking because I have to pay my rent, to me, yeah, there was some choices that I made that I probably wouldn't have made had the money been there. But I also have friends that have been in relationships where they didn't have to do anything sexual for money and they chose to. Like, it's like they 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 missed it. They fiend off it. I had a it's friend who literally hot. was engaged, it's living yeah. with her partner, lied about what she did for a living and would travel. Engaged. Engaged, lived with her nigga. And said that she was like a wedding planner or something. Mm -hmm. Would travel to New York, would travel to DC, would travel to all these different cities and be on Eros. Right. And literally. Oh my God, I forgot about Eros. And literally <laughs> stay on Eros like for the weekend mm -hmm. and make all the money and then take come it back down, home and right? take it back home to yeah. her husband or her fiance. Did never find out? Where she played. Um, no, he. she did find out because, of course, with clients, you, you start getting repeat customers. Right. So one of them ended up really liking her. And so he ended up just finding the messages between them two. So it seemed more like a sugar daddy relationship mm -hmm. than God. what she was really doing. And since it's they could handle and, it. And, and he was really, he got, yeah. I won't say how bad it got. It got really bad. They're no longer together. But yeah, she got caught that way. Mm -hmm. But they were together for like seven plus years wow. yeah. and we would hang out and sometimes I'd go and hang out with her at the hotel. She'd be like, yeah, girl, I got a client coming. So you can either go downstairs, you can yeah. go downstairs or come back, back. Mm -hmm. unless she did like a, a dinner date, which would be like eight hours. So I we would just hang out date. the dinner dates. She would get paid so much money for the dinner date. It would be like a half night. Mm -hmm. She would go out to dinner get paid to do the dinner. And she did a lot of girlfriend experiences. Mm -hmm. So, but Long story short, I say all of that to say, even though she had a partner that loved her dearly, they lived together, they were planning a family together, she was like, I like doing this and this is what, this is what I'm going to do. This is my yeah. choice. This is how I want to make my money. I don't want to jive. It's hard when you have money. to lose your person for... Yeah. Also, saying quick money, it's, it's interesting because I had a conversation with a dude that I used to fuck with who used to sell dope. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me how... Bro, like, it's so crazy now. Like, he owns, it's like a construction thing or something. 
And he was like, it's so crazy now. Like everybody be like, oh, you make six figures. He's like, nigga, I'd make six figures a month. And he's like, yeah. And he's like, you know what's crazy? More than I miss fast money. He was like, I miss being in the streets. I had mad fun. I had bitches. It's a lifestyle. And I was telling him, like, oh, when I was a seeking arrangement, little hoe, I kind of miss that shit. I remember like not a bad, scary nervous. I, w- I wouldn't say that. I never really felt unsafe. Um, I've had maybe one or two scenarios, but for the most part, I felt, I felt like I was having fun. And uh, I remember getting dressed up for dinner and how it felt Mm -hmm. and like, Ooh, this guy's so excited to fuck me, but maybe I won't fuck him. I'm going to just keep getting this allowance money, which is kind of crazy because the allowance money thing on seeking arrangement is bullshit. They they prey on, on young women. They do. They do. Oh yeah. I was getting old and I was like, "Mm, I'm in school. I'm 22. Yeah. No, bitch was. 26. Right. But I was in college. I was a non-traditional yeah. student. Please. Bro, I started making, like, I realized, because, like, I knew I was going to go to college, but I wasn't really passionate about anything, particularly in college. I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to really do this up for this thing. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, just my little, my parents, they're starving. <laughs> Help me. So I don't know. What the fuck do you want to hear? I, I love a good dinner date. Like, I had, um, a couple of months ago, I, I met some, well, I met someone new. He's, you know, new a new regular client. And we did, um, you know, he flew into New York. I, I took, you know, we went to one of my favorite Black-owned restaurants in Harlem. Um, we went to di- you know went to Are you gonna share the name? The the restaurant? Yeah. Um if you don't want to share your spot, don't share I, it. No, I'm not gonna share it. Because I don't want people, yeah, I'm not gonna share it. No, oh. But we went, but we up. went to but we went to this spot, we had dinner, we went someplace else, we had drinks. I took him to it was during NFT in a NYC oh, week. Yeah. So I took him to some events and then we went back to the hotel and we were hanging out. And it's like, but I love I love that opportunity to get to know people. And like one of the things I always tell like newer sex workers, especially when I used to manage people, is that in, instead of trying to create a persona to be to be yourself, right? Yep. Because you you can only fake you can only fake it for so long. Yep. And your real life, your real interests are actually interesting. So like with this mm. guy, we were able to have conversations around Pan because he was from the continent. So we were able to have conversations around Pan Africanism. You know, he was like super interested in the experiences of Black Americans in relationship to being ancestors that were stolen. Yep. And to be able to have those kinds of conversations with him over dinner and then at the end of the night go back to his hotel and give him the Gaga Ga- 3000. <laughs> You know, and 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 for him to be like, wait, how much how how much to get for you to stay for a little longer? Like, you know, it's like, can you stay the night? And it's, and I don't like I don't do overnights. I know a lot of okay. a lot of like sex workers do overnight don't appointments eat. because I like to sleep by myself. But also I, ain't I don't want to nobody with no stranger. I don't want nobody waking up in the middle of the night trying to put a dick in me. Like, I'm not trying to be like, yeah, I, I like to, I like space in my bed. Like, I don't oh, I don't. Right. It takes me a long time to be comfortable with somebody. OK, just wait, to be able to have like, you ever with them. fallen in love with a client? That's a yes. Uh, huh? I'm taking that as a yes. Kind of, sort Indeed. of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. When I had a, I had um, like a eight year relationship with a client that was really wonderful, and you know, it was, you know, he was my sugar daddy, and so we definitely were in love with each other, and you know, but by the time it was, you know, there came a point when I wanted something more in my personal life than he was able to provide. And so like when, when he broke up with me, um, like I was, I was, I've been really open about the fact that I had ovarian cancer when I was young, when I was in my thirties. And so when the last time that I had cancer, he was like, I really want to be there. I can't be there. Uh, you know, I'm realizing that I love you too much. And so he broke up with me. Wow. But he, but he gave me a six month severance package. Oh, so, not a severance package from a sugar daddy. Yes. Help in us. fact, in fact, I was having a conversation with our mutual friend about, we were talking about a, a celebrity that, you know, who has a bunch of women on retainer. And I was like, $200,000 a year is not enough because I hope he's also paying the taxes on the, on that 200 K. I know that's right. I hope he's also paying for their wardrobe. I hope he's also um, maxing out their 401k and their Roth IRA at the end of the year. I hope Hello. he's, and I hope he's also giving, you know, paying for their health insurance and pay, giving them a severance package when it's over because you're, you're putting your life on hold to have an exclusive arrangement with somebody. And so your life and your career, which means that when that's over, now it takes, it's going to take time to get back into yeah. the game and start being able to, $200,000 ain't shit. But I wanted to ask like, you that then, in terms of even being in those situations, right? How do you leave being sugared and making money from having sex to doing it 
out of love where there's no money involved and maybe you're doing it or have you ever? Yeah. I mean, connection, I, you know, I've, but wait, I definitely have broke, have what? like. Out of love. What about, you still get taken care of by rich men, yeah. no? But the, I mean, not everyone can just keep bagging rich men. There's oh, wait, wait. I thought that, you were talking about that guy. There, there's oh, a lot just of men, in general. You know, I'm like, I in, in general, just no, relationships. In, in relationships, yeah, I mean, period. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had, you know, several ongoing, you know, I'm, I've constantly been in relationships. I used to be a serial monogamist. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recovering serial monogamist. I'm like definitely not interested in being in a relationship. Stop DMing me, asking me if we can be in a relationship. Um, <laughs> but, but I, you know, it's, it's just different. It's like, for me, the money is the, is the, is the dividing line. It's the line in the sand, right? It's like, because I, I show up for my clients in ways that in similar ways at how I show up with my partner, with a partner. Yep. minus the emotional labor, right? right? Minus the, you know, it's like, I'm not necessarily cooking dinner for you if you're a client, you know, because we're going to go out to eat. Yep. Like I'm not going to, you know, I'm not interested in, you know, being around your kids, being around your kids. <laughs> nope. Mm. Not, you know, it's like, but, the, but yeah, it's, like a good it's, job. Not, it's not, it's not that hard for me to be able to make that transition back and forth. And also I've, I've been in a lot of re, like ongoing long-term relationships while also doing the sex work. So it's for me, it's How just have you been a, able to navigate that. Did you ever have a partner that was like, I sure. feel like we have a lot of things of like, well, what did you do when he was mad? But can you tell us someone that like celebrated it and was excited about it for you? Yeah. Um, I was dating this guy. He, he, you know, and in retrospect, like he should have been a, um, well, there's a couple people. I had one person who should have been a one night stand and wound up being four years. That's a whole nother Oh, we all got that. Yeah. We all got that. Listen, you know, discernment is a motherfucker. And we don't know why we kept going <laughs> like, back. Like, what the hell? Discernment is a, is a lot. But I yes. had, you know, I had somebody that I dated for a while who was really hype about like, you know, everything I was doing. Like I met him at a time when I was starting to write, when I was starting to do college lectures, when I was starting to do, when I was with the Punani poets. Like it's like, you know, What's so your, what are your lectures? about um i lecture about you know well usually it's anything and everything having to do with porn and sex work particularly around my career i do some stuff about finance like i've done i've taught a class on economics and sex work at ucla i wanted um, to ask you that because you brought up nft i wanted to know if at any point and this could be brief but if you ever thought to make any of your porn an NFT, and if that was a conversation, some, and there's a pornography really, NFT company, poke me. Yeah, there's a few of them. Um, I I have I I'm not quite there yet because I'm trying to figure out what kinds of additional features people will get with the NFTs. Gotcha. But I already have some content that's laid out and and set for that. I made okay. one. Did you? Yeah, I made one on TV with Shan Booty. It was for fee. So Shan filmed my feet smashing into tacos. It was crazy. Love and then it. I brought on Ian Dunlap. If anyone wants to watch it, this is episode eight. Yeah. And I brought on Ian Dunlap, who's called the master investor. And I was like, tell me what to do. And he was like, oh, my God, bro. So we had to name the page, go on the site. But the thing that I didn't like about it, there was a tangible item, which would have been the food itself mm. that I smashed my mm -hmm. feet in. Mm -hmm. Some people make it panties, whatever. But for me, the reason I wasn't a fan of it is because you get actual like different currency, right? You get something called tokens. So whatever the site has that's selling the porn NFT, it's its own currency. Mm -hmm. And for me, I want to do an actual dollar exchange or something like yes. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was going to donate it, but then it ended up not going out. But I was like, yo, when I was thinking about it, if I donated my feet for charity, what the fuck? Yeah. If they, what if they only give me yeah. 200 bucks, bro? Yeah, I have a I have a hard time with it with NFTs because of the fact that crypto is is so like you know, it's so volatile, you know? It's, and so it's like, for me, yeah. it's like, well, if I sell this to somebody for $200 and then by the time I get ready to transfer the money, it's only worth like $50, mm. then what did I just do? Like, I'd rather just take- I know, sold like, my pussy money. and the stock dropped. Right. <laughs> I right. bought AMC and right. now my pussy is right. thirteen dollars. Like 13. that can't yeah. happen to me. And that's and that's real. Like that's a that's that's one of the big problems that I have with like everybody keeps talking about crypto and, and NFTs as a way of being able to circumvent the issues with MasterCard and Visa. But it's like not everybody has that's not a viable option for people. Well, we you also know? talking about market rates. Is there market rates for pussy? And how yeah. did how did how are those rates looking like today? Like you talked about what the blowjobs are in yeah. porn, but in terms yeah. of sugaring or 
escorting? Like, what are like yeah, the market I, rates? I mean, the market. What was he going for today? The market rate it 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 varies depending on your location, right? So Ooh, in, New York, in New York, huh? in New York is high. <laughs> New York and DC is high. Okay. When I was living in LA, I used to fly back and forth once a month, like just so that I could I would make all my money. I don't here. get it. LA yes. wasn't having expensive. L place. LA LA don't care about black people. The, the I know that's there, right. The they clients don't. there are not interested in black women. Nope. Like, I mean, the... the <sighs> Mo there's or, some or big have, booties or big booties yeah, like it's like you come to New York yo, and they want you got so high. many black areas our whore hive taught me that yeah like I was kind of on that shit too but then like I learned black LA and yeah. now that I just stick to it I'm it's, like it's excited different. about well, the it the niggas they're, ain't they're, Compton ain't dropping 15 racks on Compton pussy Compton Park they're is Baldwin Hills it's fucking West Adams yeah like, I mean it's, it's there's there's you get a few people you know you get the, you know a lot of celebrities athletes you know you get your there's a small percentage of black you know wealth in yep. LA that is also interested in spending money sex on work, yeah. sex workers mm. on black sex workers I mean you know they're really looking for people who are more the the who are more light skinned more, exactly. more ethnically ambiguous like they're not looking for black women you know what I'm saying I'm a black woman so they're not they're not really checking for me but if I go to Atlanta Atlanta yeah. the guys are looking to spend less money like they want yeah. to spend between 500 and 800 you know they might want to do a half hour because if your rate is a thousand they want to try or 800 they want to do a half hour just so that they can try to like you know, navigate. The half they can hour try, rate is they can, nuts. they can try to get in there. Um, and like, I don't do, I used to do half hours because I, I want to be able to see black men, but I don't do that anymore because it's like a half hour is not a half hour. A half hour is really like 45 minutes. Yep. So, because we got to have a conversation, we got to get to know each other, we got to catch a vibe. Not unless they're too many men. And even then, like for a lot of them, because these the, they're fans, they've been watching me in porn for so long, they get intimidated oh, and they get like anxiety, you know, performance yep. anxiety. And I'm like, I'm not gonna be sitting here sucking your dick for 45 minutes. That's not my job. That's I mean, it's my job. But, it's right. That but, is it's, but, but that's not my job. <laughs> like actually, you know, I wondered that with like <laughs> sex workers that are porn actresses, like. I would see it a lot on Twitter when they'll like put their city dates. Mm -hmm. And I've always took, taken that as like, okay, this is like sex worker shit. I'm in the tour. You know they what I mean? Do that, now, they don't get me Twitter wrong. name now and put the city that they in with the yep. dates. But it's my, mine has NYC. See? Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but New, like New York, D.C., Boston, the rate, the going rate is between like a thousand and fifteen hundred an hour. Yep. Um, some people will do half hours. I'm seeing a lot of younger women now who are doing, you know, like a two or three hour minimum or a dinner date, you know, dinner date minimum. And I think a lot of those people are pe tend to be people who also are pro probably have a day job or mm. so that you know or they're you know they don't have to have the um they don't have to do volume right you know but you do see some people who you know are willing to you know to book for still for 500 you know 400 500 600 an hour because they can make it up in volume do you have a max of dicks in a day one oh one a day one a day okay if then and i don't even like I why don't is it the energy it's the energy. I'm grown. Like, I don't really, I don't have that. I don't have the energy to do all that. I was like, going to say, I think man. it more than his money. It's like, damn, I bet you just feel like I need to I have other shit yeah. to do. And also like, it's, it's, and also it's hard. It's hard now that I'm, you know, now that I'm doing oh. like, I'm, you know, my, as a community organizer, I'm constantly having to switch back and forth between my sex work brain and my like educator, my educator brain. And so like, you know, like last week I had a call with the LA County Health Department about doing a monkeypox vaccine clinic and Medicaid enrollment program. Like, like we're going to wow. actually get because the work that we do with the BIPOC <laughs> collective, we have a lot of people who Don't. come to us for financial assistance and they're looking for money for meds, therapy, HRTs, like, you know, like things like that. And it's like, we can only give out so much money. Like we have, if we give, give somebody $500 and they're unhoused, like that money's not going to, or, th that go or if they need, they need groceries and meds, like that, that shit's not going to go, it's, it's going to go fast and they're still going to need meds next month. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So I was, you know, it's, it's a long-term manifestation for me. Like I've been wanting to do a Medicaid enrollment program for a while. And they reached out to us about the vaccine resistance around monkeypox, which I was like, you know, at the time you had to have like, what was it? Um, you had to you had identify to be sleeping as with you, men. Had to, you had to be a man or a trans person who had sex with men. It, yep. Who also was having commercial sex, anonymous sex, or was unhoused. Yes. And I was like, well, in the you can't, you're not gonna reach black and brown men if they're not out as being 
as yep. being gay. And you're asking trans people to to like disclose that they're trans. Why is so nuts. and and also how about like the the sex work women who assist women who are sex workers or the black black and brown women who because of cultural stigma don't know that they're having sex with somebody who's bi. I have to Ooh. give a shout on Yo, this. Yes. I'm working with the Florida Health Department for an event on October 7th in Orlando. It's called Risky. It's a dinner, seven to nine for AIDS awareness, all women, no men. And I remember when I, you know, got the offer, I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then I'm like, but honestly, when do women talk about AIDS awareness? You know, we don't. We don't. We don't. You know, like we're talking about it amongst our gay friends generally, because maybe either we're having more experience with them being aware about it or being mm-hmm. on prep and things like that. But we don't talk about that shit. We don't talk about we, it at all. And that's and for me, it's like, you know, when I was talking to them, I was like, look, I'm like, this is something that we've been wanting to do. If you have access to, to Medicaid navigators, you know, enrollment navigators, and you can bring them to the table, because I think a lot of sex workers don't know that they could qualify for Medicaid based on how much they're making. Because, you know, it's like we talk about OnlyFans, but it's like the average person is only making $120 a month on OnlyFans. Yeah. So, so you you make me want to talk about something. You guys remember the IG model? I think her name is Gianna that got HIV really badly I wrote a comment on Hollywood Unlocked basically she was talking about she'd been raped a few times and she was homeless and people were like well how did you not know you had HIV so long and one of the comments I said said this I said yo a lot of people she's like well how could you not go get tested I'm like a lot of people don't have access like that no and when I say access I don't just mean insurance people are like oh there's a free clinic like the access to understand think about what this podcast does how people now yeah. figure out we've shouted out the gyno that we went to bro mm-hmm. like people mm-hmm. are not really experiencing relationships friendships or communities where you're right. learning about how to get healthcare access right. that's a real fucking thing so yeah. when you saying oh, so-and-so can walk into a free spot. People don't even think that shit is real sometimes. Like, they right. don't know how to do it. And and it's like, you have, you know, to go into those free clinics, it's like you're, you're talking about, you know, the you know the cost of being poor, right? It's like, you might have to be in a free clinic for like- 10 four, hours. 10 hours yeah. just to get tested. Nobody has 10 hours to be there. Like, when I was on this, this monkeypox call, the woman was talking about like, it's like, they were like, oh, you have to have a computer to go online to, to schedule for an appointment. And then we send you a text message. And I was like, so you're expecting the people to have access to the internet and a phone and a laptop and a phone and have their phone on all the time. Like how, like people don't like there's, there's times when, because I don't have any, I don't have my, my phone service set up on, on auto pay. Right. Because I don't like to for money to just disappear from my bank account. So <laughs> it's like, but there are times when I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh fuck, I forgot to pay the phone bill. Like, let me, let me pay it real quick. And it's like, but I have means to be able to do that. What about people who don't have that means? Like you're expecting them to have this access for when you finally decide to get around to to texting them about an appointment but also the way they were like doing specifically like the queer and how you identify sexuality wise that was why this summer especially because new york it was yep. hot out here i didn't really go to the sex club yeah because even lifestyle and being that it was something that yep. was just touch to touch a lot of the clubs that i go to they don't ask you if you're straight so there are yep. a lot of people that are queer I'm, I'm but I, mean, not, I deal with men and women. And again, so even yeah. lifestyle wise, Same. you don't know what don't everyone know. does. But also asking people they're if with. they're straight or gay is probably going to be it's problematic. It, it's, pro- it's problematic. One, yeah. two, even if they are straight and not gay, that doesn't guarantee that we won't get monkeypox. And I think right. there's going to be a huge surge in the hetero community. Yep. Because everybody just thinks gay niggas. Well, they said it's yep. down 60%. So they are yeah. getting in control of it. Yeah. Which is I mean, good. I mean, it's, it's hard, but, but, but to go back to the original question about like, how do I, you know, like the way that I, cause I don't, I see fewer clients these days than I, than I used to. So I might see somebody, you know, I have this one person that I'm seeing once a month and then I have, and then, and that's, you know, somebody might reach out to me, but I'm really picky. Like I have, I have protocols. Niggas don't what are your protocols? Um, so I I run people. I, get, I do a full background check. I do a criminal background check. I run them through the sex offender registry because um, I, I want to make sure that I know that the person that I'm that's going to see me is not violent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at at least on paper. How much do you have to pay to do that yourself? Um, there's a couple of resources that yeah. I. There's free. I, 
They're they're not, not free. You they're, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some some stuff. I'm just curious for the yeah. ballpark for people that will maybe like like engage. like twenty dollars a month. Okay. for one platform, and then there's blacklist. There's like there's like um, where all the sex workers come sex together workers go and on share. and they share like information about about um, bad clients. I know a lot so of those, those went that away. That shit was wild. A yeah. lot of them went away during Sesta Sesta Fosta. A lot yep. of them went away, but there are still options out there. Um, so I, I do that, and then I also like I look at their social media because sometimes I don't use social media for screening um, alone, but I do look at social media because I want to get an idea of who this person is, right? Because mm. people, they, you know, they show their ass on social media, like they the do. comments. I look through their, through their tweet, their tweet, their it's, replies. Yeah. I look through the types of stuff that they're liking, you know, and, and then I also, I take a deposit and, you know, I take a 30% deposit because oh, I don't, that's right. because I'm, I'm not going to waste my time getting ready for somebody to, to not, cancel, to cancel or no show. And, and it's a non-refundable deposit. They get one time within three months to rebook. Um, and I also need proof of COVID vax, you know, vaccine also because, because we're still, you know, COVID is still in these streets. Bitch, you know what I'm saying? This is amazing. And I'm going to be real with you. I think a lot of men just think when they see that someone's putting their city or dates that they're mm-hmm. like, cool. I'll yep. come through, da, 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 like she'll look me up and see. I get mad people who will tell me that that's that the what, I, what I'm asking for is too much. And I'm like, well. Well, then go to somebody else. Then go to somebody else. Because, you know, like fortunately. To I make, make you the, comfortable. Like, to I make me like comfortable. comfortable. I, and I tell guys this all the time. I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know who I am. I don't know shit about yep. you. And I'm still a woman. You're you're a man. Like you're asking me. And we're come, about to be alone. We're about to be alone. Hello? You should want me to be comfortable. You should want, because really a lot of the screening for me is about compliance. Yeah. If you're willing to give me the information that I ask for with no problems, we don't have to go back and forth. You're just like, here you go. Oh, here's the screening form. Here you go. And they just, and you just do whatever I ask. Then I'm more likely to want to see you because yep. now you made, you made this a lot easier, but you should want me to be comfortable so when, that you can get what you want. When gets, goes away for a moment, I think men will realize that. I had a guy tell me recently that I fucked years ago. He said, uh, I don't even remember doing this, but we were in Miami and he said that there was like a, he had a two bedroom suite. And I said, are you sure no one's in here? And he, I opened the door to check when he was in the bathroom. And I remember he was like, are you trying to look through my stuff? I was like, no, I just want to make sure no There's one else is in the room. Here. Yeah. He told me, because I ran into him years later. It was Super Bowl weekend. I saw him. He was like, you know what makes me think you? Every time girls come to my house, I be trying to make sure they know nobody else is in here. He's like, because yeah. I do want them to feel comfortable. Yeah. That was like the highest compliment. Because there, because shit like that happens. Like, you know, there's there are there's always that situation where somebody is trying to set a woman up on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially sex workers, especially if you are a substance user. It's like, and and women should be checking. Like, you should, just the same way that you, if you put your glass down in the club and Bro, you walk away, you, know what's you the should new not shit? pick that shit up. I was at the box last night and it's fashion week. So if the club is packed, there's a dark room in the box where everybody does drugs. Mm-hmm. I could hear a girl. This guy was like, do you want to do a bump? And she's like, bump of what? And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, it's coke. She was like, can you do it first? And he's right. like, oh, I had a lot. And she was like, I'm good. And the girl walked out. And I was like, good for you, bitch. For I hope you. you find your cocaine. That's right. That's I, right. But yeah. I, yeah. like, yeah. if the dude, like, you're, it wants you to do drugs with him but won't do the drugs, I was like, yo, shout out to this bitch. And I remember That's looking right. at the guy all night wondering, like, oh, should I, like, watch the women? But now I'm also drunk, so I'm getting my mom brain on. <laughs> I'm like, I want to make sure none of these girls pass. I want to make sure they're okay. But, yeah. but like, can you t- t- yeah. just imagine just thinking you're having a good time, going to a dude's hotel room, and bam, another dude comes out to fuck yep. you. That's what I was thinking oh, about. Yeah. Or, or a group of dudes. Because that I'm, happens too. I appreciate mm-hmm. you like sharing with everyone a lot of tips for sex work. And also like, obviously I know I made the outline so we never get to it, but talking about porn, what would you say before the internet is- Before the internet, yeah. Sex before, sex the, before the, internet the internet is fucking nuts. It's nuts. You know, and it's funny because, you know, I I remember I did, a, um, I did an event with um, Vanessa Del Rio um, here in New York, one of my first big trips to New York. And we were having a conversation about what it was like when she first started in the 70s. And the going rate Jesus at Christ. that time was $150. But inflation, that was a lot back then. That was a lot back then. McDonald's I mean, but, had burgers. But, but also, for like 20 cents. But also not because 
you know, the porn industry is one of the few forms of sex of entertainment that does not have residuals. So That's people right. like Vanessa Del Rio or Jeannie Pepper, you know, who are still alive, who are, you know, in their 60s or or older, they are their movies are on the Internet and they're not getting any money from that. Right. So people are. You know, that's the crazy shit about that's like, the crazy only shit. fans came out. Now we can like now we can monetize because well, it's a it's a subscription, but it's the same thing that's well, happening. I mean, like get get our dollars back. Get as, our like, dollars back. I mean, it's, like, but yeah. it's happening now with the Internet. Like actors are actually not seeing residuals anymore if they're yeah. going if they're shooting streaming anything on streaming. Mm-hmm. So anything that you shoot on Netflix, anything that you shoot on HBO Max, any of those streaming platforms, if you're on there, you're not getting the residuals. Yep. Like say everyone who is on Family Matters right. or The Cosby Show right. and all these, right. they're still getting checks to this day. Yeah, and it's and it doesn't happen. I mean, like the, you know, Napster, when Napster attacked the music industry and the porn industry simultaneously, the, the music industry was suing. Like, I remember there was a case where they sued some teenage boy in Seattle for like a million dollars, right? The porn right. industry was so cocky that they thought that they would never be impacted by, 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 the, internet. by the internet. Wow. And, and as a result, Pornhub, X2, Xvids, Xtube, RedTube. X and X and now all, they have their own little shit. creator platform. And now they have their own creator yes. platforms. But they had to because of the mass pushback of you're not paying people. This is all stolen content. Yeah, porn stars at one point all just started making their own website. Yeah. So yeah. we're like, like, I remember, and that was probably like the the late 2000s where I started seeing porn stars say, hey, don't watch any of my porn on any of these on yep. sites. Please come to my actual website mm-hmm. and purchase through me because I, I get say, my, bro, my actual money. It is kind of nuts. Like, I just was thinking for a second, you know, I was just really excited because we talked to so many OnlyFans girls and sex workers and I'm like, damn, someone that's been through it all. But also, I know a lot of the shit you talk about. I can't believe we lived through this shit. Yeah. Yeah. But, but also it's, it's like wild. changed every decade. It I has. know. It has. Has. I yeah. mean, I, I was one of the first black women with a solo model website back in 99. I wow. launched my website. 99. 99. They dialed up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, I owned a webcam company they in get 99. That pussy where in. people Amazing. pixelated. It was, pussy. it was, it was so crazy because we used to have to teach, I would teach models to, to move in a way that would allow it to the look Wi-Fi, fluid. The Wi-Fi, so it didn't look like it was so, lagging. So it wouldn't be, tra- it wouldn't be like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because we we were running a T1 line into my guest house, but the on the other end, there were people who were still on 28K, no, not, not, Now you aged yourself. Di- dial up. You just aged that it. Is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, but that wasn't that long ago. That is That's wild. what But we were like doing like <laughs> this. Like, we real slow. We were real slow. Why did uh, I almost said Lisa Lavinelli. Who's the white? Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Ann. Lisa Ann. Oh, why didn't we get into this for her? Fuck, this is nuts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, but, but we really had to like, we had to teach models how to move kind of like so that <laughs> on the other right. end, it would look fluid when they downloaded it. it was now crazy. that we have 5G, can you tell right. people where to support you today online, if any place? Hell yeah. Um, singleinbrooklyn.com is the place to find all the places to find me on the internet. Yeah, that's right. Singleinbrooklyn.com. So you can go there. You can find the OnlyFans. You can find the cam, the cam site that I am that I sometimes, when I feel like it, you know, get on. Um, you can find links to my sex panther so that you can you can call me text me video chat with me That's cool. um you know all all of the things my social media everything is right there along with if you want to watch any of my other interviews you know download some pictures y'all blah 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 i've like really enjoyed talking about the 1900s <laughs> <laughs> don't worry i was born in a two. <laughs> anyway <That's right. laughs> if y'all want to support us horribledecisions.com backslash no Patreon.com backslash Horrible Decisions. Um, we have our town hall every month where yep. you can see Mandy and I face to face. We've got merch. And we honestly do all of our, we call them ketchup and mustard now. Because I love a plan. Yeah. But those are the episodes that basically I have no outline with. And so. And then also, if you guys want merch like you see behind us here, go to whorehive.com and get your merch. Uh, hopefully we have some new designs coming soon. But uh, we always have our segmented yeah, shirt, our tie-dye shirt. We got the hat. So go on over to whorehive.com yeah, and get it. Cinnamon, thank you so very much. Thank you for having for me. For joining us. This was amazing. Appreciate you so much. Yes. So much. Hope I that you guys enjoyed time. this episode as well. Um, and this has been yet again another episode of Horrible Decisions. Bye, y'all. Bye. Yeah.